Ladies and gentlemen, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have a new product from Lemon RX. This is the Lemon Stabilized 7 and 10 channel receivers. Gen 2. Yeah, so these have telemetry and stabilization built into one receiver, and they offer a 7 channel and now a 10 channel version. So basically, went from a ton of different receiver options to less. Yes. Is better. So in this video, we're going to do a high level uh, review of the receivers and what telemetry features they have, and we're going to actually use the Radio Master to do it. Yes, I'm going to show you the telemetry working on a 4-in-1 version of the Radio Master that but works with Spectrum. For those of you guys who don't have Radio Master, guess what? Still works with these dusty things. These receivers are DSMX and DSM2 yeah. compatible. So if you have a 4-in-1 Radio Master, it will work. And if you have a Spectrum transmitter. Yes, network. if you have a telemetry capable, well actually you don't really need the telemetry, but if you have a telemetry capable Spectrum radio, this is what these are for. If you find value in this video, be sure to check out GraysonHobby.com for all your Lemon RX needs. Everything ships from Atlanta, Georgia right here. Uh, everything we talked about today will be in the description below. Alright guys, so today we have the Gen 2 Lemon receivers. Uh, these are com basically combined from old models. So we have a 7 channel and a 10 channel version. And they're offered in two configurations. The base configuration is going to have a voltage probe with it. What does that do? That will plug into your balance leader and your battery, and it'll give you your total flight voltage. Like uh, if you have a four-cell battery, et cetera. Okay. Um, the total voltage of the pack. While it's in the airplane. While it's in the plane. Okay. So it'll be telemetry. Uh -huh. The second version has a current and voltage sensor option here that you plug in line with your battery and your speed control. And that gives you the ability to get um, voltage for the pack the current, and then you can actually have it cal uh, calculate how many milliamps it's used. Cool. So you can calibrate that. Um, so it gives even more features there. Both receivers also have a nifty little feature with a barometer inside. The barometer Ooh, sensor barometer. gives you altitude and vertical speed, the variometer. Um, so there's just a lot of different telemetry stuff you can get on it. So now we have spectrum and telemetry at an affordable price. Wow. So what's the difference between the Gen 2s and the old Gen 1s. So the Gen Gen 1 stabilized, they've discontinued this model. The Gen 1 had basically no telemetry capability, um, and it, well, it had dials only and dip switches. This one has the dials, um, but it also uses LEDs, which are a little cleaner, easier to use. So you don't have to worry about breaking a dip switch or anything like that, um, or finding a dental pick to, <laughs> to get it. Yes. But um, you program it through the buttons there, programmable fail safe, uh, it also features a bind button, a mode change button, and a programmable failsafe button. So it has a little more features there. If you get the 10 channel model, it also has dual Beck ports. So if you're doing a high amperage, like really robust servos on a larger plane, um, a lot of the bigger BECs have dual outputs. Um, allows you to power both sides of the rail independently so you don't have to worry about straining the, the circuitry and all that to feed the current through all the servos. So that's a really nice little feature there, a little added bonus there. And both of these receivers have the ability to plug in a satellite receiver. So mm -hmm. they do have a uh, telemetry port and a satellite port. So unlike the base model, you can actually add a satellite to it as well. So that's another difference. All right, enough bench talk, let's get the radio. Yep. All right, so we're gonna set up the seven channel here, just show you guys, I uh, bound one earlier. So we're gonna go ahead and plug in the telemetry port and I'm gonna be using the current sensor, not just the voltage, so it gives a little more data for the screen. Um, and then I need my speed control. It's just it's a clunky old one that I've been using and testing for years now. You've probably seen it from other videos. <laughs> so we're gonna plug that in. And while Will does that, the... Uh, and then we're gonna use a battery here. And I'm putting an inline switch in here just to show you guys different stuff. That's the bind buddy. Yeah, that's bind the bind buddy. Featured in this video once again, because it's very handful. So according to Lemon, they have a updated the algorithm, right? Yeah, so... This receiver, basically, it's just more uh, modernized. I'm assuming they're probably using a better chip or whatever, maybe. But, uh, but the software's they've better updated for the, the software and the gyro, so it's supposed to be a little more yeah. uh, robust, I guess. Well, it's better it's gyro. It's better. It's newer. Yeah. It's modernized. It's a new version. A new, the, Technology. Yeah. Crazy. And then also the signal for the diversity. It's been updated, too, with a... Oh, they've done a better... Okay. Yeah. I actually did not know that part. Thank yeah. you. Um, all right. So if you get the version with the current sensor and the voltage, this is, for instance, we set it up. This is going to show our max amperage, and this is going to show our current amperage. So I'm going to move the throttle with the plane attached here, and you'll see I only have a two-cell connected, so the amp draw is really low. But we can see that the live current was showing as well as the max current I was able to set with the telemetry widget. So... Which is really cool. Now, if I plug a three cell, obviously it's going to be higher, but I was trying to hold the plane too, so. Yeah. All right. So 
That works. So that's some of the telemetry sensors you can do. So for the guys that have been asking for, hey, I want a radio master receiver and I want telemetry, I want to do all this stuff, guess what, guys? We have a solution. The Lemon RX Gen 2 receiver. It does it. So if you're flying... Telemetry. And you hear that bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, but... Let's insert crash video yeah. here. Okay. All right. So we know it has a voltage. Yeah. Where, how do you get this to work officially? Yeah. So with the voltage only probe... So where are you plugging that into? The red... Plug it into the hot lead. The red one. Okay. On that. So you'll see the pack voltage there. And you'll still get your receiver pack voltage, which is what your BEC is putting out. So it, that pack is 8.5 so, volts. Yeah. And so if I'm going to use a different battery, let's just connect it. All right, so with the four cell, we're going to plug in, again, this is the hot lead here, and you can see... Nope, we can't now. Okay. See our battery voltage right there. Oh, I forgot the big one. I'm looking at the little one. Uh -huh. 14. Quit moving it. All right, so we got four cell. All right, guys, so just a little quick run through. This is with the current sensor attached, the, uh, uh, the higher end version. This is some of the sensors you can see, the TRS, and you can look online and see what these all mean. But you got from telemetry, uh, RSSI, to fades and holds, um, to voltages, to altitude, to uh, variometer speed, uh, to current sensor, to altitude, uh, and some other stuff in there, and uh, milliamps used, etc. So these are the different, and temperature probe and all that. So these are the, some of the different settings um, that you can get through telemetry on there. Uh, if you go to multimodule.org, you can look it up and see what all the different ones are. All right, guys, we know it's a very complicated receiver, and if you have any questions, uh, hit the comments below. If you have any re requests for a video on a specific setup with the radio, um, shoot us any, uh, put it in the comments below. Yeah, keep in mind, it's gyros are configured to each plane, so it's not really something you can do a one-all, one-size-fits-all video. Um, but as far as some basic stuff, we could probably do that and down the road. Um, but overall, they did a pretty decent job in the little manual. Thing.